Does the universe remember? Does it have some kind of a memory? Okay, if you think you know like human memory, the answer is probably no. We're not talking about the universe's creator, we're not talking about some kind of a omnipresence or omni-intelligence, we're just talking about physical universe. And so, yeah, today we're going to start on this somewhat loaded and somewhat difficult to answer question. But the answer might be yes. So, yeah. But in order to explain exactly what we're discussing today, we have to start with a bit of a history. And specifically, the history of gravitational waves. And if you've watched any video in the last 7 to 8 years about the topic, you probably already understand the basics. Back in 2015, we finally officially confirmed the existence of waves produced by space-time itself, gravitational waves. Something that was detected when two black holes collided billions of light years away from us. And actually not so long ago, just a few months ago, I've briefly talked about an update to all of this, discussing where all of this is headed as well. But prior to like hundreds of detections, before 2015, all of this was still extremely theoretical. And the history of this unusual phenomenon starts over a hundred years ago. In the late 19th century, there was this self-taught mathematician and physicist, Oliver Heaviside. And back then he proposed that, well, technically, if light is electromagnetic waves, we probably have something equivalent in terms of gravity as well. But it wasn't until 1916, or about 20 years later, when some of the first propositions by Einstein provided a bit of a theoretical basis for this. And in this case, it was basically tiny ripples in space-time. However, Einstein refused to believe they would exist. And a few years later, he was also able to demonstrate that maybe it's just a problem with the way we measure things, especially in two-dimensional coordinates. In 1936, he published a paper where he specifically stated gravitational waves could not exist. And they couldn't exist because they required a singularity in his formula. In this case, singularity, or basically infinity, implied that there's something wrong with the math. But quite a few people disagreed with Einstein and started to make counter-propositions. And finally, in 1969, a physicist, Joseph Weber, released the paper you see right here. He strongly believed that he finally discovered the gravitational waves. And he did this by taking metal tubes and placing them approximately a thousand kilometers apart. By detecting deviations in signals inside those tubes, he strongly believed he finally found gravitational waves. That proposition and that discovery pretty much went viral in physics communities and was as controversial as the recent discovery of the LK99 superconductor. Pretty much most people did not believe this to be real, but wanted to actually provide evidence for why they believed he was wrong. Now, originally he was actually suggesting that he's detecting these coming from the galactic center. But the amount of energy that would be required to release these waves implied that within just a few million years, the entire galaxy would be out of energy. And so detecting so many gravitational waves, as claimed by Weber, would be physically impossible. Furthermore, as various teams tried to recreate his experiment, they basically had negative results. And so within just a few years, this was most likely found to be incorrect. But during this time, another team, this was actually a Soviet team, with the famous Yakov Zeldovich, responsible for many different cosmological discoveries, tried to work out a theoretical approach for why his calculations was not good physics. And while doing complex math, they discovered something they did not expect. They discovered that if gravitational waves were real and they vibrated particles in certain ways, many of these particles would not actually return to their original location after the wave passed. Or just to rephrase this, the physical objects present in the physical universe would be slightly shifted by every gravitational wave that passes through them. Over here we're talking about very minuscule sizes, even smaller than a typical atom, by hundreds and even thousands of times. With all of this happening as a result of space-time stretching in one direction while being squeezed in the other direction. With all of these particles eventually shifting just a little bit in the direction of the wave. But this was theoretically discovered back in the 70s and nobody actually expected to find anything. Ironically, it only took approximately four years to find first signs of gravitational waves. Now, this was in the 70s, specifically 1974, and it came from a binary pulsar system. Today, it's known as the holes taylor binary. And here, mathematically, Russell Holes and Joseph Taylor were able to demonstrate that because of gravitational waves, these two pulsars were actually orbiting in a slightly different way from what's expected without gravitational waves. They ended up winning a Nobel Prize in 1993. 
but it took approximately 40 years after that to finally confirm the existence of gravitational waves once and for all. The event known as GW150914 was the first ever observation of two black holes colliding produced as a result of black hole collision. The detection and the analysis in this case also resulted in a Nobel Prize in 2017. So you might see a pattern here. Discover something about black holes and gravitational waves, win a Nobel Prize. So what's the next one? Yeah, I think we're coming to that really soon. Even in 2016, several teams started to already discuss the idea of gravitational memory. The idea that goes back to that proposition by the Soviet scientists that basically proposed that maybe these waves do influence the universe, changing it just a little bit every time, and essentially dramatically changing the fabric of the universe, reshaping it over billions of years. Now, this might not make a lot of sense at first, but I think the best way to try to visualize this is by imagining a perfect crystal. In our current understanding of space-time and the universe, we kind of think of it as a perfect crystal. Perfectly symmetrical space-time with infinite points all connected and all equally distant from one another. But this new proposition in regards to gravitational wave memory suggests that these crystals over time start to stretch, start to deform, creating various deformations extremely small in size. And all of this would be absolutely tiny, once again subatomic in size and potentially having almost no effect on the surroundings. But nevertheless, it would still be there, and several groups have now been working on a way to try to discover if this is true. Now remember, even this was thought to be impossible. Here we're talking about minute deviations only detectable with super super accurate lasers. But the gravitational memory is believed to be even more difficult to see. But turns out that there is a way to see it. And it might be in tiny shifts in ripples as various signals arrive to Earth. But just detecting one collision is definitely not enough. It's not going to provide enough evidence for anything. But a lot of recent studies determine that by having hundreds or even thousands of detections from LIGO, Virgo, and the Japanese Kagra, it's going to provide enough statistical evidence to see if there's any shift because the universe itself is changing as the waves pass through it. Here's actually the first paper about this. This was released back in 2016. And the thing is, in the next few years, because of the LIGO upgrades and because there are now so many detections every week, the expectation now is that we're going to have enough data in just over a year to start making first conclusions of whether this idea has any merit. And the thing is, if scientists do discover gravitational memory, or basically the universe itself seems to change with every gravitational wave, that right there is your third Nobel Prize for gravitational waves. Now, they might still need hundreds of signals, possibly even a thousand, and obviously the more the better, but it's quite likely that within the next few years we'll have our first results. And by detecting this strange phenomenon, this gravitational memory, would very likely dramatically change physics once again. First of all, our understanding of space-time would now be different from what it used to be years ago. Here it would not be symmetrical like a crystal, but instead it would be entirely dependent on gravitational events and entirely linked to gravity itself. It sort of changes the shape of space-time, suggesting that we might have gravitational effects when there's really nothing there, just because of the shape itself. So could we actually have these minute gravitational effects everywhere around the universe as a result of this gravitational memory? This strange residual gravity would probably be the strangest phenomenon we would ever discover. Okay, I don't think it's going to explain dark matter, but it might. More importantly, this would be an important confirmation for a lot of ideas involving supersymmetries. And even more importantly, it might finally connect gravity to the quantum world. And so by discovering these unusual forms of symmetry, we might potentially have a connection to quantum physics and to other physics we still don't understand. But once again, these effects would very likely be extremely minuscule and potentially have no effect on our physical world. Or at least that's the belief for now. Intriguingly though, these initial propositions have already suggested that something similar might exist with other waves as well. For example, electromagnetic waves. Maybe these types of memories are formed in a lot of different types of waves and different types of physical forces. It's even been proposed in regards to strong force and maybe even the weak force. Basically the forces responsible for subatomic particles. Now that's obviously something that we're not going to touch in this video, but basically the point here is that these types of memory formations might actually go beyond gravity and beyond your typical wave. Although a super important side note, 
I keep calling these memories, and I mean, it is called memories by scientists too. It's once again not a very good name, because we associate memories with the subjective human experience, and I'm sure there are going to be a lot of comments in the description suggesting that this is a proof that the universe is conscious, it's aware, or that it's some kind of a super intelligence. I mean, sure, you can think that, but the thing is, no evidence for that whatsoever. In this case, the word memory is used in the same way that we use it for memory foam. I don't think memory foam has anything to do with super intelligence or some kind of a universal force. So basically the same principle here. It just refers to the idea that the physical universe might change just a little bit every time these types of waves seem to affect it. But at least for now, as of mid-2023, it is still just a theory. There is no evidence whatsoever, and all of this might still be disproven later on. Nevertheless, mathematically at least, it currently makes a lot of sense. And so chances are that, in the next few years, we might have our first answer, and possibly even another Nobel Prize. But on that note, well, that's pretty much all we have right now. Just a few theories, a few intriguing ideas, nothing concrete just yet. But if you want to learn more cool stuff about gravitational waves, check out some of the previous videos that basically touch on things like can you actually surf a gravitational wave? Can you hear them? Like with your ears? But more importantly, there's a video about this most recent discovery in regards to this unusual gravitational hum, this unusual vibration that seems to be present everywhere. And that is actually the biggest mystery we have right now. But anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, we'll definitely come back to this once there's more information, so subscribe if you'd like to learn more. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.